Let's try this paragraph proof. So I've had a couple requests for paragraph proofs. I know a lot of you who land on my channel um, come there to see the two column proofs. Um, so I thought I'd do a paragraph proof, but the one disclaimer I wanna give about paragraph proofs is that certain teachers have certain things that they're looking for or certain ways they want things worded. So the most important thing is if you are watching this video for ideas of how to, uh, how to do a paragraph proof on a test, make sure you talk to your teacher about how they want specific things said. So I'm gonna tell you how I would say it and what I would accept, but it's always super important to check with your teacher since they're the one giving you the grade. Um, Okay, so this proof is actually one that I've already done in two column form. So it might be good actually to kind of open that one up and take a look at what it is and you'll be able to see kind of how we convert it from two column to paragraph. Okay, so um, I wrote up my handy, I actually wrote up the two column first and then the paragraph underneath because I personally, I think two column proofs are the best, the easiest, the simplest and whenever I write a paragraph proof, I actually write the two column first. Um, okay, so what we're going to start with, and again, every teacher is different, um, is I'm going to start with, we're going to write in purple the proof. Um, so we are given triangle ABC, um, C figure one. Okay. Now, not every teacher may require that you write that first step. I, you know, I think it's good because then we know what we're talking about. Um, okay, so now the next thing we do for paragraph proof is we list our given. So remember in our two column proof, we just list them. Okay, but in a paragraph proof, we have to actually write them out. So we write, we are given that. I'm gonna come all the way over here. We are given that. And then you just write it out. Angle A is congruent to angle C and DB, segment DB bisects angle ABC. Perfect. Okay. So we've told everybody what figure to look at. Um, we've now listed our given. So now we have to get into the proof. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I think it's good always to mark off. So we have A is congruent to C angle, A is congruent to, and then DB bisects angle ABC. Okay, so when DB bisects angle ABC, what does that mean? Well, we, we, we know that when you have an angle bisector, it's going to split an angle into two congruent angles. So we're just going to write that out. So what we're going to say is since segment DB bisects ABC, so since... Segment DB bisects angle ABC, okay, comma, okay, um, angle ABD, so this one's going to be, I should put two there, that angle is going to be congruent to this angle, so angle ABD is going to be congruent to angle CBD, okay, so let me just write angle a, B, D is congruent to angle C, B, D. Now, here is where we have to write that thing. So remember, with your two column proof, you wrote the statement. So you would write the, you know, this as your statement, and then your reason would be um, definition of angle bisector. So in this case, what you're going to write is because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Two. Okay, so, um, so angle, so since DB bisects angle ABC, okay, since DB bisects angle ABC right up here, um, we know that ABD is congruent to CBD because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. 
okay? Um, now, what are we gonna do next? Now remember, our goal is to prove that AD is congruent to CD. So if we can prove the triangles, if we can prove that the, these two triangles are congruent, we can then use CPCTC to prove that the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are congruent, okay? Um, so, all right. So what are we gonna do next? Well, we've got, let's see, we've got two angles, but we don't have, you know, we can't do angle, angle, angle. That doesn't help, that just has similarity. So um, we need a side. Um, and something we can definitely see right here is that BD is congruent to itself. So we're just gonna write that out. So instead of writing BD is congruent to BD and then reason reflexive property, we're gonna write it in a sentence. By the reflex reflexive property of congruence, comma, okay, BD is congruent to BD. Segment BD is congruent to segment BD, okay? Perfect. All right, um, so now we can write that up. All right, so now we know that these two triangles are congruent. So um, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD by angle, angle, side, okay? So we just need to write that out. So then here's where it gets kind of, we kind of have to list everything before we write this out, okay? So we have to say, um, because, we're gonna start with because. Okay. So because angle A is congruent to angle C, okay, so boom, boom, okay? Then the next thing was that these two angles were congruent. So angle um, ABD is congruent to angle CBD. Okay, so now I've taken care of this and these two and the last thing was what we just said, which was and BD is congruent to itself. Okay. Um, then we get to the two triangles. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. Okay, so triangle A BD is congruent to triangle CBD, okay? Um, and then here's where we get, um, here's where we have to actually write it out. By angle, okay? Um, and I just do dashes, oops, not side. It's angle, angle side. Angle, angle side congruence, okay? Um, all right, so um, you know what? And we probably should write angle, angle, side, triangle congruence. And again, remember, I said you just, you need to check with your teacher and see how specific they're gonna be because some teachers are gonna be really specific and say you needed that triangle congruence in there. Some teachers are gonna be a little laid back. Some may not make you write this whole thing out because you've already listed everything up here. So that's where checking with your teacher. With two column proofs, there's kind of like really like, this is how you do it. With paragraph proofs, there's like a lot more leeway. So that's where, I think that's why a lot of teachers do stick to two column proofs. I taught all, I taught paragraph, I taught flow, and I told the kids on, on a test, you can do any proof you want flow, paragraph, or two column. Um, but I then started to work mainly with two column um, just because I think it's, it's more concise. You just get to your point. Here's what I can do and this is why. Um, we don't get worried about all the words and, and how we list it. Um, okay, so by angle, angle, side, triangle congruence. Okay. So we are almost done. Did I spell that right? Congruence. Okay, perfect. So now we're to our final step. So we prove these two triangles are congruent. So now we know that AD is congruent to CD by CPCTC. So now we just have to kind of write that out, okay? So we write, therefore, okay, and then write what we're proving. So AD, segment AD is congruent 
to segment CD, okay, um, because corresponding, gotta check my spelling here, corresponding parts of congruent triangles, almost out of space here, are congruent. I'll just write it down here. Perfect. And that's it. We proved it. So here's an example of a paragraph proof. Um, now, every teacher's different. Some teachers might really like paragraph proofs, and I, I can kind of understand, like, when you get to higher level math, it's not really two column anymore. But I do think, I mean, as long as you're showing your thinking, that's what matters. And then just talk to your teacher about like what words they'd like you to use, how specific they'd like you to be um, to kind of make sure you're doing it properly. But all you're really doing is taking that two column and just converting it and listing everything and writing complete sentences. So this is C, P, C, T, C, but we actually wrote it for what it is, which is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, okay? So there you go.